from Italy. He's from the heel of the boot in Apulia from the University of Bari. And he's an expert on sourdough fermentation. He published a groundbreaking research in 2007, which I'm sure you're going to be telling us about. Um, and his group has carried out intervention uh, trials showing that baked goods made with this fermented wheat can safely be eaten by celiacs. Welcome, Marco Gobetti from the University of Bari and Perugia. Thank you for the kind presentation and for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, what I would like to describe you is the history of uh, our laboratory concerning the use of the sourdough to degrade uh, gluten during food uh, processing. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to define what is the sourdough. Sourdough is a mixture of flour and water fermented by lactic acid bacteria in yeasts. Lactic acid bacteria are the microbes that we are using for making the yogurt. Yeasts is the same species that we are using for whey making. And these two uh, groups of microbes are responsible for the capacity to leaven the dough and to acidify it. You have not to add these microbes to the flour. They are already contained in the flour. They are coming from the environment or from the plant. Uh, looking not for Google, but for, for one of the most scientific uh, common databases, Web of Science, uh, a large number of uh, results are coming uh, uh, searching for sourdoughs, uh, which shows uh, how the sourdough is very important not only for Beckerts, but also for the scientific community. Uh, how the sourdough lactic acid bacteria in yeast may contribute to the organolytic features of Beckert goods. Lactic acid bacteria on the left of the slide are responsible for acidification, lactic and acetic acid production for proteolysis. They increase a little bit the volume of the dough. They synthesize volatile compounds which are responsible for the taste, for the flavor of the bread or the other baked goods. They improve the gas retention and they decrease the uh, bread staling. Yeasts uh, I'm a microbiologist. I'm in favor of lactic acid bacteria. Yeasts are less important, but it's true. Uh, yeast are especially important for uh, the synthesis of volatile compounds and to increase the volume of the dough. This is a microbiological map of uh, the sourdoughs that are used for making the most typical Italian breads. If you look, together with the name of the bread, you may find a number of species, meaning that uh, uh, at least uh, two species of lactic acid bacteria are contained in the sourdough, with the, an elevated number of biotypes within the species. If you look to the name, one of the most common species is Lactobacillus sanfranciscensis, the first time isolated since long time ago from one of the most famous uh, sourdough bread, the San Francisco sourdough bread. It was uh, one of the pioneer sourdough used for making bread. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, we, we heard about uh, uh, a fashion of uh, our culture. We are an eating culture, but how to take care of this biological and cultural heritage. With the mul mul uh, multinational uh, company, uh, we first built up the first sourdough library in the world. This library is in Belgium and houses, uh, sourdoughs, recipes, ingredients, history of sourdoughs, but also microbes. We isolated and we identified microbes which are uh, kept in this uh, uh, library. Obviously, the library is consisting of uh, a number of refrigerators to keep, uh, to keep uh, the sourdoughs. But uh, 
Uh, coming to the celiac disease, we heard a lot this, this morning by especially uh, Alessio Passano about the sourdough, no? And we also heard in one of the uh, presentation about the differences between a normal diet and the gluten-free diet. So we have to know that uh, uh, new novel thera therapeutic approaches uh, are in progress for the treatment of the celiac disease. Uh, within them, there is also the, uh, the sourdough lactobacilli. This is our first publication in 2004. We started 2002. And uh, I'm one of the author, and uh, I'm the author MG. MG, in the acknowledgments, thanks his father for the practical suggestions which promoted the idea of this work. Uh, my father uh, supports, supported and supports the idea that the sourdough bread is the most digestible bread. So this was the inspiration, but nothing different from the uh, dozens of emails that I'm receiving on a base, on a base, on a monthly base, basis uh, by Beckers. This is the last one from uh, Beckers from the United States. He claimed that uh, his sourdough bread uh, may be the key element to solve uh, a lot of uh, intolerance and sensitivity problems related to uh, weed components. So, this is the struggle of our research team against the gluten. The first publication was uh, in 2002, and we markedly decreased the content uh, of the gluten from wheat flour. But uh, four more years were needed to get uh, a residual concentration of gluten less than 10 ppm. So we are working since about 15 years on that subject. I show you the end of the story at the end of the presentation. <laughs> this is the, our first publication, uh, the publication in 2007, where we used an uh, army of uh, sourdough lactic acid bacteria, 10 different microbes, together with fungal proteases, fungal proteases that are routinely used in the bakery industries. So we subjected the wheat flour to a long time fermentation under semi-liquid conditions, and this is the results. This is the results by the ELISA immunological assay. This is the concentration of gluten in the flour, and this is what happens at the end of fermentation. In other words, all the wheat proteins were degraded to a mixture of free amino acids and very short peptides. But I want to go more in depth about, uh, about uh, this mechanism of proteolysis. What are doing fungal proteases? Fungal proteases are starting the degradation of gluten, liberating oligopeptides. Oligopeptides cross the cell wall and the membrane of the lactic acid bacteria. The transportation is mediated by transporters. Once peptides are inside the cell, intracellular peptidases make free amino acids that are excreted out from the cell. We describe this mechanism using the 33 mer. This, this morning, somebody mentioned the 33 mer. The 33 mer is the main epitope responsible for the celiac disease. So once the 33 mer is inside the cell, this is the cell of lactic acid bacteria, a number of peptidases, this is the acronym of peptidase PEPN, PEPO, PEP, PEPX, and PEPQ. So at least five peptidases are responsible for the complete degradation of this uh, epitope. Uh, the same results were found against other epitopes which, were, which are responsible for the celiac disease. As well, uh, we found the same results against uh, uh, durum weed cultivars, 
other species, barley, rye, and oats. So uh, we've, we had uh, the demonstration of this biotechnology against uh, all the varieties of, uh, all the species and varieties of cereals. So after uh, uh, degrading the gluten, after explaining the mechanism, uh, we, we jump to a number of in vitro and ex vivo uh, challenges, trials. Uh, some of them were carried out also with the kind cooperation of Professor Alessio Fasano. These uh, uh, trials help us to gain confidence on our biotechnology and to jump on uh, in vivo clinical uh, challenges towards uh, uh, celiac disease uh, patients. This is the first uh, study, uh, which was carried out in uh, 2010. So we prepared uh, sweet baked goods, about uh, 200 grams, which contain the equivalent of 10 grams of native gluten. The difference was that the gluten was completely degraded during fermentation. These uh, sweet baked goods were given to uh, celiac, eight celiac disease patients daily for a period of 60 days. Serology analysis and intestinal permeability analysis were carried out. None of these parameters had showed deviation for, from the normal value at, after 30 and after 60 days. So we jumped to a second clinical challenge, which was carried out with the uh, European Laboratory for the Study of Food-Induced Diseases from the University of Naples. In this case, we prepared biscuits with the wheat flour, which was previously hydrolyzed, and the gluten was degraded. Uh, the portion was 100 grams of these biscuits, which contain eight grams of hydrolyzed gluten. Also in this case, the number of the patients increased, but the, also in this case, the challenge lasted about 60 days. In this case, not only serology analysis, but we carried out, they carried out, I'm a food microbiologist, uh, they carried out also uh, the analysis of uh, biopsies from the intestine and also some uh, immunohistochemistry analysis. The MARSH grade showed that during the challenge, all the patients, these are only five, did not show variation of the MARSH grade. So the mucosal uh, was remain as at the beginning of the uh, trial. Now, we are at the third challenge in vivo with the same uh, laboratory. And in this case, we, we used to the hydrolyzed wheat flour for making pasta, bread, pizza, and sweet baked goods. Why? Since the challenge is lasting six months, so the daily portion, we have to alternate pasta and pizza and the bread. Uh, 10 patients were subjected to a daily administration of such products and serology analysis, morphometric analysis, immunohistochemistry analysis were carried out together with the gene expression profile of peripheral, peripheral blood monocytes. Uh, we are almost at the end. The challenge uh, will be concluded uh, at the beginning of the next year, but almost all the patients have completed the trial showing also in this case the complete tolerance and safety of our uh, production. So during uh, our study, we were lucky since uh, one of the most important Italian company uh, had uh, confidence in our results. So a patent was registered and uh, a biotechnological process and industrial process was uh, uh, built up. Uh, the industrialization of this process is the following. So uh, we have to mix water with flour, fungal proteases, selected sourdough lactobacillus. Uh, we needed 10 years to select the best 
N1. So not all the lactic acid bacteria, only those that we have selected. You have to mix together all the ingredients and the biochemical agents in a bioreactor. Bioreactor is, uh, it seems, uh, a too big instrument, but is nothing else than uh, a container with uh, the control of, temp of the temperature, of the pH, uh, and uh, some, uh, some mixing. So after a long time semi-liquid sourdough fermentation, uh, since the semi-liquid condition, we have two different technological possibilities. The first one is directly to add other gluten-free ingredients, rice, mice, starch, gums, to submit to a short Becker's yeast fermentation and to get with gluten-free Beckett goods. The most interesting option is the second one. So after fermentation, the semi-liquid flour dough is dried to get a moisture content which is the same of the wheat flour. So you may store your flour as you want during time. And so this wheat gluten-free flour may be used as the only ingredient together with the structuring agents and to be subjected to short time Becker's yeast fermentation for making, for making breads. So, uh, what we uh, were thinking an illusion uh, 15 years ago, now is becoming a reality. And this is the reality of uh, our research. This is the brand of the Italian company. The bread should be into the market the next, within the next June. Obviously, at the beginning, uh, the market will be the Italian market, but uh, I'm trying a translation is a, I'm sorry, uh, traditional flavor. The tasteness of the wheat flour without gluten, and uh, on the right of the brand, there is an explanation given to consumers on now we may get this wheat flour without gluten. Uh, gluten. So uh, we hope to be lucky also with, uh, with this product for the next June. Uh, I will keep you informed about the results. And uh, this type of bread should have uh, a number of, of advantages together against the naturally gluten-free bread. Uh, this is the major point for gluten-free products. It should, it should have uh, better sensory properties, better rheology properties, an extended shelf life, higher mineral, vitamin, amino acid, and fiber bioavailability, lower costs with respect to the currently produced uh, gluten-free products. And probably it may also improve the social life of a celiac disease individual. I don't want to forget uh, uh, this morning, the Fil Rouge was, uh, by presentation by presentation, was the microbiome. A number of studies have shown that the microbiome of uh, celiac disease individuals, also during remission, also under gluten-free diet, is a little bit uh, different from that uh, of the healthy individuals. So the diet may have a role on this difference and to eat with instead of other gluten-free products may help to do that. Uh, coming to the conclusion of my presentation, I would like to recall to all the benefits that are attributed to the sourdough, all the nutritional benefits. The major part of them are attributed to the uh, sourdough lactic acid bacteria. Uh, these benefits also include the effect towards other wheat components different from gluten. So we didn't stop our activity. We started already with a new project. This is the project that has been submitted to the European Commission dealing with the a sourdough biotechnology with lactic acid bacteria and enzymes to produce safe wheat foods for people suffering from IBS and NCGS, 
we spoke this morning, Alessio spoke about uh, the sensitivity. So uh, I heard that there is uh, a Deplian uh, with uh, uh, an advertisement with the Pasta for All. Our, uh, our acronym is, uh, is, uh, is weed, weed for All, except for uh, celiac people and those who are affected by allergy. This could be the weed or the weed products for all. And what we are doing, we are uh, selecting also in this case enzymes and lactic acid bacteria, but not only to degrade gluten, to degrade fructans and to degrade other weed components which are responsible for the sensitivity to, uh, to wheat, not sensitivity to gluten, to the sensitivity to, to wheat. So I'm concluding uh, uh, showing this, uh, this figure. This is the application of the uh, high throughput sequencing of uh, uh, sequencing technique to uh, describe the sourdough microbiota. This is a, this, I don't, don't worry, I don't want to explain you this figure. I want just to recall that this figure was uh, the cover of one of the most important microbiological uh, journal the Applied Environmental Microbiology, an American, an American journal. And this innovative techniques was uh, useful to describe the diversity of the sourdough, the potential of the sourdough. But we have not to forget that we are speaking about a very traditional and probably one of the oldest example of the natural starter. And uh, let me to say my warmest thanks uh, to uh, the Beckers from my institute. These are my young co-workers. And uh, I have to say that during the last year, a part of my laboratory was changed in a Beckers, but an old, as you may see, an old and traditional Beckers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marco. Do we have, I, I can see they're lining up. <laughs> and I knew you'd be there, Peter. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dr. Gabetti, I, I spoke to you a number of years ago when your studies came out. And I have a question, because I think it's been interpreted in the popular press somewhat, or on blogs, that it means all sourdough has this effect. And I know you talk about selecting particular um, strains of lactobacillus that have this effect. Um, but I'm wondering, have you gone back and studied sourdough cultures that are used in bakeries and whether they have any of these effects in degrading gluten? Yeah. Uh, the idea that promoted this work uh, was that if you compare a bread uh, started with Becker's yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, against a bread made with sourdough, there is a difference on the gluten content. So the gluten content is lower when you made the bread with the sourdough. Lower, but too high uh, to be used for uh, celiac people. But uh, the inspiration is that also a normal sourdough uh, improves the, the proteolysis during sourdough fermentation and the degradation of uh, the wheat proteins. Fascinating. Um, I just had a quick question, and maybe I just don't understand, but is the fiber amount affected because of the sourdough working on the proteins? Uh, we didn't look to the, to the fiber. Uh, as far as I know, uh, lactic acid bacteria may modify the environment, for instance, causing an acidification which may interfere with the bioavailability of fiber and other phytochemicals, but not directly on uh, fibers. So, so we would, there we should would... be not uh, any significant modification regarding the content of fibers in our uh, sourdough bread with respect to the other type of bread. OK, thank you. Two quick questions. One is, does the bread taste sour? Does it taste like sourdough bread, or does it taste like uh, typical wheat bread? So 
uh, obviously, if the industry has developed the brand, uh, before the industry did uh, a marketing job, looking, uh, uh, using a number of uh, celiac patients. This type of bread is a, is, a, is a very sour bread. But at the end of the fermentation, uh, we try to buffer this uh, acidity since uh, is too much acid. I didn't show you the, the protocol in details, but uh, the fermentation to get the complete degradation of gluten is, very, is a long fermentation. So at the end of the fermentation, you have a pH 4 or less than 4. <laughs> so the, the uh, acidity remains in the flour. And then how much of the acidity, how much of the, the process is a result of the lactobacillic activity and how much of the enzyme, protease enzymes that you've put in there, how much is each contributing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, both are responsible. At the beginning, we only used lactobacilli. As you saw in the struggle of our laboratory against gluten, at the beginning, we decreased markedly the content of gluten, but we were at 18,000 ppm and so a high level. Then we put proteases and proteases were, was the key, to solve the, the key to solve the problem since they start what lactic acid bacteria are, have not the capacity to do is the primary proteolysis. They don't start a very uh, in-depth degradation of proteins at the beginning. So proteases are very important for that. Two quick questions. The first is, um, does the bread still use a stabilizer like a gum? This lactobacillus, uh, you know, uh, we built up uh, the first sourdough library in the world. We have uh, all our fridge uh, containing sourdough lactic acid bacteria. I started this work since uh, 20 years ago, so we have uh, probably 1,000 or more strains of lactobacilli. And it has been a very long work uh, for selecting uh, those that have the capacity. Uh, I forgot to say one thing. If uh, five peptidases are needed to degrade gluten, the epitopes, uh, so one lactic acid bacterium may possess one peptidases, another one, another enzyme. So combine, combining an army of uh, uh, strains, you may get the mixture of enzymes that you need to completely degrade uh, the gluten. But in the bread, when you bake the bread, is there anything like any um, guar or xanthan, anything like that to bind the bread together because there's still no gluten in it? Yes, yes, okay. you need at the end, yes, yes, you need at the end uh, structuring agents like hydrocolloids, gums, uh, to, to building up the structure is uh, the, that is not gluten. And my other question is, is this a product that you would sell on its own as a flour ever, as a gluten-free flour, or are you only selling it as a baked uh, bread? I'm not in charge uh, from the... <laughs> 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 but anyway. Uh, I think that at the beginning they would like to just to sell the bread. They want to start with the bread uh, made with, uh, with flour uh, without gluten. Just that. Thanks. Thank you very much. Maybe